Hey guys, what's up? My name is Taylor Van Beek and come check out my 2005 GMC Savannah 3500 camper van that I just got done building. So this right here guys is my 2005 GMC Savannah 3500. It has got the 6.0 Vortec gas motor in it so it is very torquey and will pull whatever weight you need it to. Now since this van is my daily driver I wanted it to look kind of cool which is why I went ahead and bought the passenger van model with the windows so it does not look as creepy. As you can tell in this video, I also went ahead and limo tinted all the windows so they cannot be seen inside as you are camping. I went ahead and bought these headlights, these smoked headlights off of Amazon. They're actually really nice quality and they're only about hundred bucks. Direct bolt-in fit and they work great at night. Now they don't make any cool taillights for these vans at all. They just make the clear chrome looking taillights and as you can see my van is all kind of silver murdered out black wheels black windows so i went ahead and vinyl wrapped my tail lights these are just stock tail lights and i went and bought the darkest vinyl wrap i could to wrap them since they do not make any kind of blacked out tail lights for this van i also went ahead and bought some vantech crossbars they were about 300 bucks for the pair and they are great for attaching any kind of storage rack, kayaks, surfboards, any kind of stuff you'd wanna put up on the roof of the van. They are built real well, they're real thick and sturdy, and they are way better than any kind of other crossbar you could buy. They just attach right to the rain gutter rails, as you can see, like a typical ladder rack would. I did go ahead and put the WeldTech five inch lift kit on this thing, which consists of a two inch spring spacer up front, and a three inch spindle lift. And in the back, I have just got the three inch blocks installed. This van does have 18 by nine fuel crank wheels on it, wrapped in some 285, 60, 18 Nido Ridge Grapplers. That tire size comes out to a 31.6 tall by 11.2 wide. So you still get that nice wide track width. So you're not sinking in any of the sand or the mud. Now this particular van does have the sliding door and I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask, does the sliding door hit your tire? Yes, it does. As you can see, it does hit the tire, but what is nice about that feature is that your door then stays put and won't slide as you're sitting at a camping spot. The door still opens plenty to so go ahead and jump up in the van. I would say the sliding door still opens about 75% of the way, so there's really not any issue with getting in and out of your camper build. So now we will work our way to the inside of this camper build. Now this camper, I specifically love wood. I went ahead and bought three quarter inch tongue and groove pine and stained it a golden oak color along with three coats of polyurethane to give it that nice shiny look. Now let's go ahead and check out the driver's area first. As you can see in between the two front seats, we have got Lola's dog bed, which I'm sure all of you know who she is if you've been watching my videos. And this is where she sits while we are traveling. Now, of course, my Lola pup is a princess. So when we are sleeping at night, she is always on the big bed with me. She is not stuck in between the seats. Since this is the passenger van model, it did come with all the nice features such as the captain seats. It's got the power windows, power locks, cruise control. Now no camper van build is complete without a dancing hula girl. In this van build, I have also installed this curtain rod right here so I can go ahead and close these curtains when I am sleeping at night so people cannot see inside while I am sleeping. In this build, I have also got a diesel heater installed under the passenger seat. This right here is the hose that the heat comes out of. You can see the diesel heater mounted up underneath and there is the exhaust for the heater itself. Now I have got the diesel tank mounted right behind the driver's seat. 
So my diesel heater that I did put in this build, it is the five kilowatt model, which I believe is overkill for how small this van is. So if I were to ever install a new diesel heater, I would probably get the three kilowatt model. Now this is the Chinese diesel heater. So I only paid like $120 off of Amazon for it. It has worked great for the last year that I have had it in this camper van build. My coldest night I have spent in this van was negative 18 degrees. And with that heater on a medium heat, it was a nice 62 degrees while I was sleeping. Now, the nice thing about these diesel heaters are they are very efficient. I can run this heater 24 seven for 72 hours straight. And I will only burn about two gallons of diesel, which equates to about $8 to heat your van for three days straight. These heaters are also ran off of 12 volt power, so they use almost no power out of your battery bank, which is another amazing feature of them. Now, along with that diesel heater, I have also got this van insulated like crazy. It has got two inches of foam board insulation in the ceiling. We have then got two inches of foam board insulation in the walls, along with two inches of foam board insulation in the floor. That foam board does a great job maintaining temperature inside of this van. So I highly recommend when y'all are building your camper van to insulate it like crazy. Next up, we have got the kitchen area of this van. I have got my Coleman two burner propane stove along with my Camp Chef propane oven. Typically while I am driving, that Coleman stove will just be sitting on my bed. And when I park for the night, I will go ahead and throw it up on my countertop to go ahead and start cooking. Now, since my kitchen area is so small, I did not put any cabinet doors on it because it would have been very hard to be cooking right there and have to open any sort of cabinet door and it not get in the way. So I went ahead and bought some thin steel cable from Home Depot with some eye rings. And I went ahead and attached a burlap sack blanket that I had that just slides so you can close everything off and you're not losing any space. This little kitchen cabinet area is all built out of that three quarter inch tongue and groove as well with two by two framing. As you can see, I did want to do a butcher block countertop, but I did not have the right saw to cut it correctly. So I went ahead and bought a piece of two by 12 and cut it to length. I went ahead and stained it a dark walnut color along with three coats of polyurethane on here as well. It still gives you that nice thick countertop, but I only have about 20 bucks into this countertop. To the left, I have got some more kitchen storage hidden back here. This is where I keep all of my dry food, snacks, and then all of my cooking utensils. I went ahead and built a little bench seat in here as well. So while you are eating any kind of food or if you wanna play around on your laptop, you have another spot to sit instead of having to sit up front or either on the bed. It also works great to be taking around a third passenger in this van. Up underneath this bench seat, I have also got storage for all of my cleaning supplies such as my paper towels and any of my wet wipes. This whole van does have luxury vinyl plank throughout it. It is also up underneath the bed where the storage is as well. It is a very durable floor that will not give you any issues or scratch. My 110 pound Mastiff is constantly getting in and out of this van and I have not had any issues with this floor not holding up. Off into the corner, I have got my Dometic top load fridge. It is run off of 12 volt and it has tons of space to store all your food, water, drinks, etc. The 12 volt plug is hiding right off to the side. Now, since it would have been very hard to cut some tongue and groove wood right here in this area to attach, I went ahead and installed some turf to cover up all my wires that I have ran behind there. So on this column is where some of my electrical items are, such as my diesel heater LCD screen to turn it on. I have then got my battery percentage monitor, got my max air fan remote, and then I have also got eight dimmable lights in this van. Now, one benefit to having the passenger model over the cargo model is you do have the windows, so you always get a great view and you can see around you as you are camping at night, but then that limo tent allows for people not to see in. One other nice feature of the passenger vans is they come with the pop-out windows, so it is great for ventilation as you are cooking 
and not getting carbon monoxide poisoning. And it also works great to help create a cross draft with that max air fan in exhaust mode. Now this max air fan is ran off of a remote. So at the click of a button, that fan will open and it will start to create that exhaust pool and it will pull all the air out of the van. And that is where these pop out windows come into play because when that fan is in exhaust mode, all the air from the outside will pull in and create a nice cross draft in here. I did go ahead and install a 24 inch Insignia Smart TV in here that is on a swivel mount. So you can watch it while you were in bed or you can swing it out and watch it while you are cooking dinner. Right below the TV, I have got my DVD case with all my DVDs inside of it along with the DVD player. I have then got a 1500 watt Jupiter inverter that was purchased from Harbor Freight that powers all of my stuff that is not 12 volt. The switch right here turns everything on and then you can plug in your laptop chargers, your DVD players and your TVs. I also installed several 12 volt outlets in this van as well so you can charge all of your phones and any other 12 volt accessories that you may have. Now, since I was going to be living in this van, I really wanted to feel like I was at home. So I went ahead and installed a full eight inch thick memory foam mattress. And I also built this bed lengthwise because I am six foot one and there is no way that I would have been able to fit sleeping sideways with this van. Now, I did lose a little bit of interior space when I built the bed long ways, but this is the extended length van. So I have quite a bit of room still up front. Now these passenger vans did come with a rear HVAC system and a lot of people pull them out when they are building their camper builds, but I decided to keep mine in because I thought it would have been great to be able to heat and cool this camper down at the flick of a finger while it is running. Now up front is where those rear HVAC controls are. And in the back, you can see where I built the box around the rear HVAC system and went ahead and ran a duct to let all that heat and cool air out of there and help circulate the air in this van. So I think that's pretty much it for the inside of this van. So let's go ahead and check out what is up underneath the bed in this van. Now in the back of the van, you can see how thick this memory foam mattress really is. Now I have got onboard air in this van because this van is only two wheel drive. It's nice to be able to air down your tires when you're on those back trails to catch some more grip and then be able to air right back up once you are done riding on those trails. Now this air compressor is wired into my 12 volt system so it is always on at the flick of a switch. I have also got my long extendable hose so I can reach all my tires when I'm trying to fill them up. Now this van is on hydraulics for the bed so it pulls right up and then it stays up now in the back i keep a lot of my tools here in case if i break down on the road i've got my safe where i keep a bunch of my valuables such as my cash my passports any kind of ids i might need and then i keep two husky storage bins in here that house all of my belongings such as my clothes and any other camping supplies i may need this van does have a 500 amp hour battery system and these are just Everstart deep cycle batteries. I have got the Renogy DC to DC charger in the back. It is a 40 amp model. That right there is my 12 volt fuse box that I bought off of Amazon. I have then got my mega fuse box right there and my negative bus bar in the back. Now I did go ahead and build a little two by four wall around my electrical system. So when I do have things back here, it is not going to run into it and mess them up. And off to the side, you can have a better look at where my HVAC system is housed. Right here is the intake for it so it can still suck its air in. And off to the side, you can see where that original HVAC system is. You can also get a better look in the back of how much I have raised this floor up so I can have that two inches of foam board insulation. Now, no van build is complete without some goofy wall art as well. So I've got this poster in here that my good buddy Pierce got for me. The Florida man poster. So I appreciate it, Pierce. And you can never have a camper van build without the Bigfoot sign. 
So we are at the end of this camper van build and I know you're gonna want a cost breakdown of how much I spent on this van. So I purchased this van for $9,000. It had 100,000 miles on it. Got about $5,000 into the interior build on this van and about another $3,000 on the outside build with the headlights, tail lights, wheels and tires, lift in that roof rack. So that puts me at a grand total of about $17,000 into this build and it is a fully capable Four Seasons camper van. So if you all have any other questions about this camper van, please leave them down in the comments below and I will be glad to answer them for you. And I hope you all have safe travels. Thanks and you all have a wonderful day. Bye.